So like Eric said, I work at UMES, uh, University of Maryland Eastern Shore. We have a sequential arts program. We have a graphic illustration program there. So I, I run the sequential arts program. I help with the graphic illustration program. I take students to Comic-Cons on a regular basis. We take trips to Comic-Cons three or four times a year. Um, and so I was at a Comic-Con in uh, 2015 in Philadelphia, and I got approached by the Topps brand manager. And so he hired me to do sketch cards. And so I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but uh, what I found out later is that sketch cards are a little rare inserted collectibles into packs of trading cards. And so um, since then, I've been doing sketch cards for Tops, Upper Deck, Dynamite Comics. Um, getting ready to do some with uh, Cryptozoic um, and where's my light there it is it's not very bright um, so I've done probably about 5,000 sketch cards um, mostly Star Wars um, but I've done Walking Dead Stranger Things Marvel Comics Red Sonia Vampirella uh, Mars attacks a bunch of different cards so what I'm just going to show you today is the basics of what you do with a sketch card so it's it's blank this the company sends it to you it's got a blank front it's got the back where you can sign it and it says congratulations you just found the sketch card and so I'll get uh, you know depending on what I've agreed to for the set maybe a hundred maybe fifty maybe forty a set and so um, I'm going to be drawing Kylo Ren today. So, um, what I always do, thank you, sir, with um, Star Wars especially, is I always use reference. Lucasfilm has to, has to approve every one of these cards that I do, um, and Lucasfilm is very particular about uh, getting likenesses and of the character and of the actor or actress uh, that portrays that character and so I almost always use uh, reference material uh, screen caps that I can find online depending on the movie or the project now if it's not been released um, for example Rise of Skywalker before that got released um, several months before the movie came out we got the, the offer to or the invitation to do the set um, they do not provide us any sneak peek information um, about anything. So don't ask me. I can't tell you because I don't know. So if you're wondering what the next Rogue One film is going to be about, I have no idea. Um, or whatever the case may be. I think that's the next Star Wars movie slated. Um, out. So I have no idea. They don't give us anything. So we have to find, if the movie's not been released, we have to find whatever reference material we can find online, just like everybody else does. So any trailers that may have been released, any promotional footage uh, that may be released before the film, that's what we're going to be working on. Now obviously, once the, the movie has been released, once the film's been released, there's a lot more information out there for us to use, and it makes, it makes our world a lot easier. Um, in doing that um, but like I said they don't give us any help um, Lucasfilms is super tight with their information sometimes the actors and actresses don't even know what they're filming before they get there on set that day so um, they're not going to give a bunch of sketch card artists uh, a bunch of top secret information because they know somebody's going to leak it somebody's going to sell it to a magazine um, or, or whatever the case may be so we don't get anything so what I always try to do um, is I like to add my own kind of bits and pieces to to an image I don't necessarily copy an image uh, I use it for reference and then I move from that so whatever I add to it uh, is, is what what makes it mine you know um, because a lot of us use the same images over and over again a lot of artists especially when we're limited in terms of what we have available 
Um, and so it's all about how I draw it uh, and what I convey through my drawing that makes it original, you know, it makes it authentically mine. And so uh, I'm not compelled to um, make anything photorealistic. So I'm just going to show you, I start everything with a nice loose sketch. Um, uh, and um, I just move forward from there. Uh, I ink everything and then color it. Now, um, all I'm using here, so this little funky looking pencil, it's a Japanese pencil. It's a lead holder. So you can buy lead and sticks and just refill it. I like the fact that it's kind of fat. It feels good in my hand. Um, and so I use this. This is probably like 2H or 4H graphite in that. And so I just use this one to kind of quickly gesture in, sketch in uh, loosely the the basics so in this image it's all the tail is in the mouth um, and the eyes so it's really important that you get that emotion and the only way it's really being conveyed in this image is through the eyes and the mouth. Um, it's really important to get the, the proper angle of the mouth, uh, the corners of the mouth, and the eyes to get that right. <clears throat> so, Adam Driver's, for me, fun to draw. He's got a really authentic, original looking face. Um, that I can not be so concerned about. Um, you know, for example, if I draw Carrie Fisher, I'm much more nervous about drawing Carrie Fisher. Um, she's pretty, and everybody knows what she looks like. Um, and so you kind of freak out with that. It's a lot of pressure. But with Adam Driver, he's got this very distinct looking nose, very distinct mouth. Um, and you can play with a little bit so real loose that's what we got going on so far right um, and then I'll just go in so this is a finer pencil with a little darker lead um, it's a point two um, turn my ring off on my phone. so it's a point two again it's hard to find a point two pencil if you look it's super, super fine uh, lead. Um, and so I like to use that. I can't find a harder graphite for the point two pencil. If I could, I would. Um, you got to be careful, though, with it being that sh um, thin uh, and a <clears throat> that hard of a lead. It's, it's going to be basically like a needle um, and you cut up your paper a little bit if you're not kind of gentle with it I'm just going in just tweaking some things in the eyes and the, the details So I'm just kind of going in, futzing around with some of the pieces of hair. And again, it's important to get that lip. And one of the things I teach students, obviously, at the university, one of the things I 
I emphasize with my students is really pay attention to what you're drawing. Um, make it authentic. Don't just draw generic eyes or nose or mouth on a, on a character. Um, if you're making it up, that's great. You can just make up whatever that character looks like. If you're drawing a character that exists in film or whatever, um, it's really important that you really pay attention to the shapes carefully so that you get those right because that's what makes a generic mouth different from a real looking mouth from from Adam Driver's mouth or from uh, Millie Bobby Brown or whatever the case may be whoever you're drawing And so I'll look at the spaces in between shapes, the negative space, as much as I look at the positive space or the space, the actual shapes themselves, um, and try to make that all make sense. So I'm looking at the space in between the fingers, the space, this funky little space, if you look at the photo, uh, this funky little space here trying to look at that and seeing how that relates all right and so then I'll go back in and say all right that little shape there needs to be changed slightly all right so he looks pretty good so far So like I, like I said, if um, when I submit these, all of my cards have to be approved by Lucasfilms. If they don't like it, they reject it. You can't show it. You can't sell it. It won't go in a pack. Um, same thing with Marvel. Uh, if Marvel Comics doesn't like my cards, they reject them. Um, I've been lucky that I've only had ever, and I've probably done about three to 4,000 cards for Star Wars. I've only ever had one rejected. Um, Marvel, I've had like three maybe. Um, Marvel usually when I get, if, when I did get rejections, they, they don't tell you why. Um, but my assumption is always that it's something about the likeness of the character and not fitting within the, uh, either the framework or the copyright um, guidelines that they provide. There's a, there's a fair amount of creativity to the character that the artist has to bring to it because they don't tell you like use um, this shot or no well for for Marvel no Marvel there's nothing mm -hmm. um, and Marvel it's very specific that you do not refer refer to movie likenesses so even if I'm doing like Thor Ragnarok obviously it was a tie-in it was a set that was a tie-in to the movie um, on the back of the card, there were images uh, from the movie. I cannot draw Chris Hemsworth or anybody that appears in that movie. I can draw generic Thor. I can draw generic whoever. But I can't draw Chris Hemsworth as Thor. But you can use their reference pose, but they just can't look like that character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Is that uh, because of the likeness, likeness, likeness rights? Yeah. They don't want to pay. Basically, they don't want to pay... Uh, the actor or the actress to use their likeness this is what I'm assuming um, so it's weird uh, and that's one thing that you realize and learn as you as you do these different projects each company has rules and it's you, you get a contract with each um, set that you do and you need to really pay attention to that and so Marvel, I just make stuff up. It's great. I just make stuff up. Um, Star Wars, if you make stuff up, you have to be very careful because it will be more likely to get rejected. 
Uh, Lucasfilm doesn't want you playing around with their characters. Um, and so if I'm going to draw Adam Driver, it's got to be within character. It's got to be within the canonical framework of the U Star Wars universe. Uh, if it deviates from that, they're going to slap you. Um, so that's why for, for Star Wars licensed projects, I just usually use reference um, and just do screen caps so that I know that that's good. It's you know, they're not going to say, oh, no, because if you start taking liberties too much with your characters, they're going to reject you. Um, and a lot of screen caps are just so just if you look online when when they release the DVDs or whatever, people will rip the images, you know, off the uh, off the DVDs and put them up on a website. And so there'll be high quality uh, screenshots from the film. So I'll use those a lot. Now it's all about cropping and everything else. Obviously when I'm, this is not the scene from the movie. You know, it was a wide shot. Uh, Han Solo and Kylo Ren together. So it's my creative liberty, how I crop it. Um, how I pose it within the, the framework of the picture plane. You guys have any questions for me so far? I'm just enjoying watching you draw. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I, I, mean, I came with my daughter here. I wasn't familiar with the kind of work that you do. It's very interesting. It is. I wasn't familiar with it either until I got hired to do it. Um, really? So they approached you cold? You've never heard of it? No, I'd never heard of sketch cards. I was doing what were called at the time artist trading cards. Um, you can buy those online. They're just little trading cards shaped pieces of paper. You sketch on them and I would sell them at cons okay. um, and so um, I was doing those just as something quick and easy to to do and I can sell them at cons and there's no real stress you know it, it, it it's a small card if I screw it up I throw it away um, and if I like it I keep it and I can put it in a binder and sell it at a convention um, so while I was doing that um, I had no idea I hadn't bought a pack of trading cards in probably a decade and a half, you know, since I was a teenager. Um, and I certainly had no idea that there even existed this phenomenon where they paid artists to draw cards and they inserted the actual artwork in the pack. Um, I was familiar with the idea of them putting, for like example, baseball cards in my um like a piece of a baseball bat or a uniform or something like that. Mm -hmm. I knew they did that, but I had no idea that you could actually get a, a real piece of artwork in a pack of trading cards. And so uh, when they hired me, I had no idea. Do you get to sign these as your original work or do they? I can't sign the front. Okay. Um, so the, the signature is always on the back mm -hmm. in the block. Uh, Prior to 2017, I was actually still signing the front of the cards. Um, and then somewhere in there, Lucasfilm decided that nobody can sign their artwork on the front. And people started getting objections just based on the fact that they had signed their cards on the front. And so at that point, I stopped because obviously I didn't want to get my cards rejected. Um, I'm, um, and it was a little bit of a, uh, you know, you, you think, oh, well, that sucks. I'm not going to be able to sign my name. Right. Um, but then you get over it. You're like, all right, it's, I'm signing the back. It's my card. Mm -hmm. I did sign. My name's still associated with it. It'd be different if I had no credit at all. Right. Um, so I got over it pretty quickly. Some artists really had an issue with it. Um, <clears throat> I don't, it's hard to say. Uh, there is a um, magazine that comes out called Non Sports Card Update. Um, and they produce a hot list mm -hmm. of artists. 
I'm on the hot list. I don't know what makes me on the hot list. Um, I've been on the hot list since I've started doing cards. Um, I've been told that it has to do with how many cards of yours are being sold on eBay, sales and things like that um, relative to the value of the card. I don't know. Um, so some artists I guess are more sought after than others. Um, but most people are just happy to get one when they when they pull one. Um, and some are, some people collectors are into it to make money, mm -hmm. and so they're trying to find the the cards they think will flip for more money. And so I don't know how you do that, quite honestly. Um, when you're collecting things in with the intention of trying to make a profit. It's, it's, I don't, you can't, you can't predict. Right. Um, I mean, I can throw a card up on eBay for $20, it won't sell. I can throw a card up on eBay for $100 and it'll sell. You don't know what sells, right. you know. Uh, you don't know what drives a collector to buy whatever they buy. Um, and so, for me to try to sit around and worry about, oh, am I going to be a hot artist or... Are my cards going to be more valuable or less valuable? It's not worth it for me to worry about. Um, I just do what I do. I try to put out a good product. Um, we don't get paid a lot of money for these cards. They pay us per card. And then we get to keep um, a certain amount of cards for resale for ourselves. Okay, so you actually get to keep the blanks and do cards? Or mm -hmm. They're supposed, they need to be approved. Okay. Uh, sometimes they'll let you keep the blanks. I've been doing these for so long. Um, they just let me keep my blanks and I can draw them, whatever. And as long as they're eventually approved, it's fine. So I have, because I work on such, we have super tight deadlines. Mm -hmm. And so if I can not draw seven cards, and make the deadline that's a lot easier for me you know so if I can keep my blanks blank and not have to freak out about getting those all done uh, by the deadline that makes it a lot easier sometimes especially when I'm doing more cards if I'm doing like a hundred cards if I had to do even my APs um, for the deadline that means I got to do 113 cards by the deadline as opposed to a hundred cards, so. That's actually pretty cool that they do some original in there. Everything is so mass produced. It is, I, and, and some people, and I guess I did it first too, some people really are, com, uh, you know, confused by that. They're like, hold on, you, because everybody thinks, oh, you do these cards and they reproduce them and they right. No, that's not the case. You get the actual drawing. I can't reproduce these cards. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to, I couldn't reproduce the card and sell copies. Because um, they own the, basically, from the contractual standpoint, once I do it and sell it or get paid for it, they own this image. Nope. Ever? Well, that's not true. Okay. Sometimes, if you're if there's a real rush set, um, and they want to avoid having to approve a hundred cards per artist, mm -hmm. they'll say, "All right, just do ten designs mm -hmm. and repeat those ten designs over and over again." I did that for the first Rogue One set. Um, I've done that for a couple of Star Wars sets. I did that for uh, a Fallout set um, because everything's, you know, if you're talking about 50 artists and 100 cards an artist, that's a lot of cards that have to be approved uh, and looked at by some poor guy somewhere in an office probably. Uh, it depends on the set. Um, so if you look on a, if you go to Walmart right now uh, and buy a pack of cards on the the pack there will be in little fine print uh, odds of what you can get in that pack. Okay. 
So there could be a signature card, there could be some sort of fancy foil card, or there could be a sketch card or whatever the set has in it. And so it'll show you what the odds are of getting those cards. Generally speaking, uh, it's about one in 2,000 for sketch cards. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's one in 10,000. So if there are fewer artists working on the set and it's a more limited set, then the odds are much more stacked against you of getting an actual card, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, got tagged in a video recently, um, and I did. This is stuff I had no idea that it happened. Uh, it's called Card Break. Okay. So these collectors will buy boxes of cards, and they'll videotape them unwrapping all their cards. It's called a Card Break. I had no idea what that meant. Um, yeah, you do, right? Um, and so I got tagged in a video of a Card Break from a collector in Japan and he pulled one of my cards um, and you know I'm sitting here looking at it and he says something about me I'm like what is he, what is he saying about me you know is it good is it bad I don't know um, and so um, my cousin who actually lives in Japan and is fluent in Japanese um, I tagged him in the post on Facebook and I said, what is this guy saying about me? Um, he said, because I, I, don't know, I want to know if it's, if it's good or bad. I want to know it one way or the other. Um, and so he said, you know, the guy said that he heard of me, that, he, that I was well known in the community, and that my work was known, you know, as being high quality work or whatever. I was like, well, that's good, you know. No, it's hard to say. There are groups on online, uh, on Facebook specifically. There's a group that I'm involved with that has thousands of members. Um, so there's a large collector community out there that buy these things. Um, so I don't have a big eraser, so I'll just use the back side of this one. Yeah, yeah, and um, and uh, you know, I'll get contacted by people from all over the world, um, either one in commissions or so. It's great just to be affiliated with right. the license um, of Star Wars. You get people contacting you from all over, everywhere, um, wanting art, wanting your autograph for whatever weird reason. Um, <laughs> I got a, I get weird emails and messages from all kinds of people from everywhere now. Um, I got a guy in Germany that just asked me for autographs. And I'm like, my autograph is not worth, he was gonna, he wanted my autographs to sell at an auction for charity. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. What is he talking about? Yeah. So, so I, I just signed some base cards that I had done for Star Wars and I mail those to them because my autograph on a piece of paper I don't think it's worth anything um, unless it's a check that I've signed <laughs> and <laughs> even then it's questionable um, so uh, but there's a guy in Belgium that buys my stuff there's a guy in uh, this uh, for me this is there's uh, a, a DJ in Germany jo I think his name is jot jot something or other um, he's a DJ in Germany and he loves my stuff and he's always looking for my stuff and, and tagging me whenever he finds some of my cards um, yeah this DJ in Germany Sounds like you may have a big German fan base. I do I do I have there's a guy in um, I, I did do a base card so a base card just means um, I did an original illustration and it did get reproduced okay. thousands and thousands of times included in the base set um, and so I did a base card for Star Wars Galaxy um, and it was of Kato Ko who is uh, Billy Lord uh, Carrie Fisher's daughter 
and um, there is a self-proclaimed biggest fan in the world of Kato Ko, of Billy Lord, and he immediately started contacting me. Um, he's in Australia. When he found out that I was doing a card of Kato Ko, he freaked out, and he started emailing me and messaging me on Facebook. Um, because he was so excited about this card that I was going to do for this set. And then <clears throat> I was able to sell the original work to him um, once it got printed and once I got it approved by Lucasfilm. So he owns the original artwork for that card. Um, his name is Ping Fang. Ping, Ping Fang from Australia. Yeah. And, and as far as I know, the last time I contacted him, because I was really worried mm -hmm. shipping artwork to oh, Australia, yeah. um, I was so I was like, "Did you receive it?" Yes, mm -hmm. he got it, uh, and it wasn't cheap. I mean, he paid a good amount of money for it, okay. um, and I was just worried that it might get damaged, yeah. and I just wanted to make sure it's safe and sound. And so I emailed, I messaged him, "Have you opened it yet?" No. <laughs> He's just got it in the box. It, um, I don't think he's ever opened it. Wow. He just wants everything related. Yeah, he just wanted it, you know, because it's because he's that big of a collector. He just wanted. So now I'm starting to color. So you can see, going in with the Copics. Do you use Copics? Um, Copics. I have like sort of rip-off ones. Rip-off ones. They work. Because they're too expensive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I use the Copics or the Copics or however you want to say it um, because it's a good system uh, I can refill these uh, when they run out I can replace the tips um, so it is if you have the money to invest it's a good system to use um, I'm not getting paid by Copics uh, so there's no license, or you know, there's no uh, endorsement deal. I mind an endorsement deal. Well, there's no endorsement deal. Um, but they're just easy and fast. Um, you know, I get paid. Like I said, I don't get paid a huge amount. So the faster I can do these, um, the better. Uh, and now I want to do them fast, and I want to make sure that they're nice quality. Um, but I don't want to spend two hours on a card that I'm getting paid very little money for. So it doesn't m make sense for me to do that. Okay, and so... Were you already a big Star Wars fan? When they I was a huge stuff? fan. I was a huge fan. Um, the, it was funny because the guy, um, the brand manager, he manages all the, the non-sports cards made for Tops. He was in Philadelphia. He hired me. Um, now... I was telling Eric, you know, we get so many wackos at conventions um, that I've become very cynical um, and very cautious when somebody approaches me with something that sounds too good. <laughs> yeah, right. If it's too good to be true, it's probably too good to be true. Right. And so this guy comes up to my table, oh, I love your work. Um, I want to hire you to do sketch cards. I'm the brand manager for Tops. I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> and, you know, but thinking, uh, he could be lying right. on the, at the same time. And then he says, we ha we're working, I'm doing a new a project coming up right now. Um, are you familiar with Star Wars? <laughs> like, what kind of stupid question is that? Of course I'm familiar with Star Wars. And so he was like, you know, I don't have my business cards with me because I'm here on, uh, I'm just here for fun. I wasn't planning on working this weekend, uh, so I don't have any business cards with me, but I'll have my art AD, my art director, contact you tonight, and we'll get a contract to you, and um, this was when The Force Awakens was getting ready to come out, um, and he was like, we'll get you on a set right away, and you know, I'm still thinking, this guy's lying, um, he doesn't have a business card, you know. Uh, but I got an email that night, and and um, but yeah, I'm I was I'm a super Star Wars fan. Uh, you know, born 
in 73. Um, you know, my mom wouldn't let me go see the first Star Wars because she said it was too violent, um, which I've reminded her about ever, <laughs> ever since. Um, but, you know, as soon as I could get to the uh, theater for Empire Strikes Back, I was there. And some of the few non-sports cards that I collected, I collected some baseball cards, um, but were when the, the summer that Empire Strikes Back came out, my sister and I were on a family vacation with my grandparents, and we were obsessed with collecting the whole series of, of Return of the Jedi cards. Uh, that summer uh, was it 84 or something like that um, and so yeah I'm a huge Star Wars fan so I love drawing the cards I love being a part of the fandom um, because I draw the cards I'm able to submit artwork to the Star Wars Celebration um, art show and so I got in the first year that I submitted work um, so that was a huge, big deal. Um, like 75,000 people went to that convention um, in Florida. And I created a limited edition print for them for that convention. Um, and it was very cool. So for me, just to be involved with this is, I'm not going to tell them that. It's, it's pretty good, you know. I, <laughs> I'm not saying I do it. I'm not saying I do it for free, but um, it's not bad, you know. Um, yeah, uh, exactly. Right now, my work is distributed worldwide um, for free, you know. Uh, so um, you can't beat that. You know, people in Japan are getting my cards. People in Germany are getting my cards. People all over the world are getting my cards uh, and seeing my artwork that would never have seen it before, um, unless they stumbled upon me in the on the internet. Now, when you're not doing cards, what do you like to work on? I, I because the cards are so small. Anytime I can work on anything bigger, mm -hmm. I'm really excited. Um, so if I can make some art that is not. Uh, two and a half by three and a half inches I'm very excited uh, I like to do painting I, I do some oil painting um, I really have a desire to do some printmaking I, I got my MFA in printmaking from College Park um, and I haven't been able to make any real prints in a long time and I would love to be able to do that um, again but uh, I just don't have that much free time so when I can, I'll, I'll paint um, or work on large or larger illustrations. Um, but I'm getting nonstop jobs from various sketch card companies all the time. So um, my wife uh, is very frustrated because I spend most of my free time sketching little teeny cards. Um, everywhere yep I take them to swim meets I take them everywhere I go I take a little pile of cards with me um, because they're easy to carry obviously they're very mobile I usually scan them in batches ah. so I have a large format scanner at the university so I can scan uh, 19 cards at a time and I just send them the emails um, and uh, tops or whoever the company is that I'm working with will forward those to uh, the license holder whoever that might be if it's Lucasfilm or AMC or uh, Netflix or I don't know whoever the case may be Yep, um, The Walking Dead. They haven't done. I think The Walking Dead is is dead. Uh, uh, I I still watch the show. I love the show, but as a franchise, mm -hmm. it's hard right now. I went to my first 
Walker Stalker Convention this summer, they're having real issues. Really? Yeah. Um, it was a ghost town. I mean, we're, I, I'm going to conventions, you know, um, big conventions, where you're talking thousands of people are going all the time. And um, I was really stunned um, how dead the Walking Dead convention was. <laughs> um, it was dead. Um, and I made very little money and it was in Cleveland so I it was a it was a wash for the weekend I, I took a bath that weekend um, uh, but I loved I love working I love the series but we've not had a set in probably two years now okay. probably a year and a half maybe two years um, they're just not really they're just not making any so I did all the sets that Topps released. Um, they were they were released by a different company before I was involved. But once Topps got the license, I, I worked on every set that they produced, um, and I enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, it's. Fear of the Walking Dead. I mean, I love all the shows. We watch, my wife and I watch those shows all the time. And I think they're still decent, you know. Um, Fear of the Walking Dead takes a different slant on the series. The, right. the, sorry. So there's Kylo. Um, now I didn't bring with me. Um, so on top of this, oftentimes, I'll use color pencil uh, or maybe even some acrylic inks. So I would go in and pop in some highlights with some acrylic ink or color pencil, but I don't think I brought any of that with me. Um, and then oftentimes I'll go back around uh, the contours with a thicker brush marker or something like that. But that's about it. If you have any questions for me. Um, Are you going to include this one in the series? Yeah. This one will go in uh, the second set for Rise of Skywalker. So this will be out there in the world somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I thought it would be neat if I did one that's actually going to be. Yeah. Do you have to use any kind of a finish afterwards to make everything stay? No, because the markers are pretty permanent, um, it would be different if I was using a lot of color pencil. I would spray it with a fixative. Um, but since it's all marker, and most of these guys, once they pull them, they're going to go right in a plastic sleeve and a, a case immediately. So I don't worry about it um, unless, like I said, unless it's a lot of color pencil. When I, some stocks, some of the card stock um, is difficult with the marker. So I'll be forced to use color pencil on a lot of it. Um, because the markers won't work um, and so in that case I will um, spray it with a fixative at the end when it's all said and done you have any questions for me Mm -hmm. The only thing she's ever said she wanted to do for college was get a master's in, in arts. And mm -hmm. I said, I don't know much about that. Well, I, I do. Teach it. I so, do. <laughs> um, 